What is up guys, Doubles back here with a brand new video, and today I'm going to tell you how to play Project Ascension Season 8 Classless World of Warcraft, an updated guide in 2023. Hope you guys enjoy, let's jump right in. Alright guys, so a lot of you guys have been asking about having an updated guide made for Project Ascension. My last real big one was like almost a year and a half ago, maybe almost two years ago, 2021, right? And the game has changed a lot, including the Mystic Enchanting System, which has changed dramatically. I'm going to go over everything today from the very beginning to the very end, and you can check the timestamps in the description below if you want to skip ahead to something that you don't know. Uh, so, let's begin with the obvious. What is Project Ascension? And I'll do this as quickly as I can. Project Ascension is a 3.3.5a based World of Warcraft private server. It is classless World of Warcraft. To break all of that down, 3.3.5a just means it takes place with a Wrath of the Lich King client, and therefore it's Wrath of the Lich King based in many ways, and classless in this case means that you can build your own class, not that it's like RuneScape and that you can do literally whatever you want, but that you can build your own archetype. So, if you ever wanted to be a Frost Archer, you can try to do that here. If you ever wanted to be a Shadow Bear, you can definitely do that here. And if you ever wanted to be a Pirate, you can do that that too. There's a variety of different ways to play and they're always coming up with new ones and buffing and nerfing things that have to be adjusted. So there's a lot of ways to play and that is the point of Classless. Now, Classless is the crux of Ascension WoW. It's what they based everything off of from the very beginning, but they are actually branching out and they've branched out a lot in the last year specifically into different concepts. Some are not fully out yet, some have been tested only, some are to be seen. One of which is obviously Conquest of Azeroth. That is going to be a 21 custom class server with vanilla to wrath progression it is currently in alpha not out yet you can only get access to it by uh, you're purchasing a book that gives you access to it on your ascension account in game or through the shop i will unfortunately say but also we also have the league four that we just experienced which showed us and we'll talk about leagues in a moment but it showed us what they want to do for the future in regards to adding a vanilla plus ascension server how this is going to look i don't know but they just recently teased on twitter that or x right uh that they're going to be giving us something like this soon and so maybe by the time you see this video they will already have that out and we could do another guide for that specifically if we have to but it's all about custom wow in the ascension world but specifically classless right now ascension has two main uh let's say overarching game plans for how they structure their servers they have seasons and they have leagues now a season is the the biggest one, right? It takes the largest amount of time. Some seasons have taken over a year to get done with. And currently, we are in season eight, and that came out almost a year ago today, actually. Maybe a little bit less than that, like nine months or something like that. And leagues are simply shorter versions of seasons that they typically use to test out new ideas, which typically then get implemented into the next chapter of their season. Now, I said chapter. Chapters are breakdowns of seasons. They're less of like a season league concept. They're much more micro we are currently in chapter three of season eight and it just came out which is what prompted me to remake my guide on how to play typically as far as we can see there's only going to be about four chapters at most in a season and then after that we go on to the next season and seasons obviously will give us drastic changes to the game and that's what everybody really looks forward to so we're in chapter three we're going to get chapter four with that being said there are two servers that you can play on thrall and area 52 and this is a fundamental thing area 52 is free pick. Thrall is draft. Now, Area 52 is also, and I am going to colloquialize this and be as honest as I can, the dumping grounds for every other season and league that has ever existed in Ascension's history as far as I can remember. And what that means is that there's a lot of gold on that server, there's a lot of old characters, there's a lot of progression, it's fully progressed, so you have to keep that in mind. But by being free pick, even with everything I just said, you know, in your mind, you can still pick any ability in the game, in any combination, with everything else we end up talking about in mind, and and build your class. Thrall, on the other hand, is draft. Thrall is the seasonal server. It is the season eight server, chapter three server, and it is also a random server. You get to pick one of three abilities all the way up to max level. You keep drafting from one of three, and then what you have is what you get. You'll have other options we'll talk about later on to hone your build in, and I'll even talk about why would you even want to play on a random server versus a free pick server, with my personal opinion obviously being a big part of this. So, 
that's the difference between the two, and those are the two that you can play on. So I'm gonna actually go over a very, very simple step-by-step -step basis of how to play from literally level one all the way to max level, but I wanna start it off by going over what makes Ascension Ascension, and it's very clear and concise as far as I can see, so we're gonna start from the top. First of all, you can make a unique build. So. I can tell you right now where to start to make your own, and that, my friends, is going to be in your own brain, right? What I'm gonna tell you when I end up going through my step-by-step -step is that what you can do is easily look at the enchants in the game. If you have any prior WoW knowledge, and I have to assume if you're watching this guide that you have at least prior WoW knowledge, you'll know what some of the abilities do. They will be recognizable to you, and you will be able to create something fun, as long as you know where to start, and I will tell you later on in the step-by-step. -step. But if you want to copy someone else's to get ahead of the pack, you can check out the hero architect in game. You see upvoted builds. You can try those. If they're highly upvoted, they're often quite good. People leave descriptions where they even tell you how much DPS the build does and uh, how much HPS the build does or just how tanky it is. And then you can just copy that and immediately start being good. That's an option. I post videos where I play a variety of different builds. I showcase them myself. I try to make random things work. You can check out my discord for stuff as well. But the hero architect is an obvious good place to look because it's in game. The next thing to think about is the mystic enchanting system which is the way that you make a unique build. First of all, what is Mystic Enchanting? Well, it's been completely changed as of Chapter 3. You used to enchant your gear, and now you no longer do. You enchant your character. Now, you can see one of my characters in-game right now. There are a variety of different ways that you can learn how to play the game, including all of these Path to Ascension quests, which you'll get from call boards, and they'll be forced on you as well. Very good when you're new, maybe not so good when you're not, but I will quickly show you a rundown of how enchanting works. First, I'll summon my own enchanting altar. You get your own when you reach level 60 you get a free one use one that comes in the mail you can also buy them off the auction house super cheap because they're very plentiful so that's something to keep in mind but here is how it looks and here is how it works you have 17 enchantment slots on your character most of them are going to be rare or uncommon slots in my case all of them are rare but you could put the uncommons in here as well and then you have epic and legendary with that being said there are four tiers uncommon green rare which is blue we have epic which is purple and then obviously we have legendary which is going to be orange, right? So that would mean you have, once again, one legendary, three epics, and 13 of any of the blue or green enchants, and you can mix and match them as you want. Now, typically, altars are going to be found in capital cities, like the one that I just summoned, uh, whether it's Stormwind or Orgrimmar. You'll go, you'll click on it right, and you'll have two tabs up here. So I gave you a basic rundown of the enchantment slots, but you're going to want to go to the Enchant Scrolls tab. You'll see Obtain Unfinished Mystic Scrolls. You can then pay 10 silver uh, to obtain a scroll. We can do that now, and it's going to give you, in your inventory an untarnished mystic scroll which then appears right here what you can then do is click the reforge button right here and you will get your first mystic scroll now in order to reforge you need something called mystic runes mystic runes are acquired just from leveling prestiging uh, and stuff like that doing daily quests honestly it just kind of comes to you and if i'm honest one thing i'm pushing for and one thing i think might be their end goal would be to get rid of the currency concept entirely so uh yeah it's just something to think about but for now it costs a mystic rune so i can reforge the same scroll as many times as i want until i run out of runes it's one rune per reforge and when i find one i want i can choose to either activate it and then select it on one of my slots so that i could then use it or, assuming that I didn't already own the enchant, let's find one that I don't own, like this one, Improved Concussive Shot, I could click the Save to Collection button to save it in my enchant collection. All of these ones that you see, I own. But what I could do is go to the filter up here and sort by unknown, and all the grayed out ones are the ones that I never saved to my collection, or they were from seasons where they didn't, you know, actually give me the ones I had from a previous one. That's actually happened before. But it doesn't matter. The point is, all of these ones are there for me to collect. There are literally 213 pages of different enchants with different effects. That's why you'll need to go through this and really think about what you want. And I'll make it simple and clearer as we get to the step-by-step. Now, in order to save something to your collection, it's not free. You need a Mystic Extract, you see. And the way to acquire Mystic Extracts is actually super simple. All you have to do is keep reforging. As you reforge, your level is actually going to go up. And every time you gain a level, you get one Mystic Extract. I'm level 416. It's going to take me a super long time reforging to get to 417. But when you're level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, maybe even up to 50, it's super fast, super easy, and you won't spend that many runes to make it happen. Now, there's one easier way in some ways to acquire Mystic Extracts, and that will be with the Prestige system. I'll go over it later on, but every Prestige 
stage that you complete, you'll get three Mystic Extracts, and that's a really solid way to bypass all of this entirely. Lastly, we have Mystic Orbs. Mystic Orbs are what are actually used to use an enchant. Um, now, all the rarities have a different cost. Blues and greens will cost you, as you can see, six, at least for the blues, and the greens will actually cost you three. Um, the epics right here, as you can see, will cost you, I believe it's 10. Let's see, it's 10, yes. And lastly, the legendaries will cost you 25, as you can see right here. And so you will have to save up orbs, which are acquired in the same way as runes, daily quests, prestiging, just leveling up in general. If I'm honest with you guys, you will get to a point where acquiring the currencies is absolutely arbitrary, basically. You'll never think about it, you'll never care. So don't really worry about it too much. Your first prestige, your first level up, they might feel a little scarce, but as you do dailies and play the game, it will come naturally and it won't be that bad. Okay, so that's a rundown of Mystic Enchanting. It's a lot better now because it's on your character, not on your gear. So your character could always have the enchants you put on it at any level. It's super fun. The next thing I want to talk about very briefly is the high risk game mode. The high risk game mode is interesting. It's gone through many iterations. It used to be a lot more popular in the past when the world in Ascension was much more popular. But as I'll end up going over, the main way to play is typically instanced content at this point. Here's the thing though. You can turn it on, I believe at level 15. You can participate in high risk by simply going out into the open world, finding another player who also has high risk mode on, and then fighting them. Now, in order to turn high risk mode on, you want to go to one of these guys. They always look the same, regardless of where they are in a little town or a major city, the hybrid risk system. You talk to them and you do the risk of reward and you select it. There's also a PVP PVE mode and a PVE PVE mode. The difference being in no risk PVE, nobody can attack you ever. In no risk PVP, you can still actually duel people and you can engage with people of the opposite faction. In high risk, you can fight everybody. When you select high risk, you'll get an ability in your spell book. It's called mercenary for hire and this allows you to attack people of your own faction in high risk mode and this is very very useful i think most people that turn on high risk want this on you can only turn it on in a city though sadly so make sure that you turn it on as soon as you can and then basically what happens is you go out into the world you pk people when they die they drop a chest you can loot the chest and you can get gear from it and their you know personal items from their inventory and you can try to sell it make money off it or anything like that next up we have mythic plus and the new difficulties this is just a quick rundown of what there is we have normal mythic plus we have mythic plus of the original vanilla dungeons like let's say maradon or let's say dead mines uh we have ascended difficulty as well there's mythic raids but there's also ascended raids ascended are the hardest in the game brand new mechanics with them different things to do it's a new pve type of experience and then we have prestiging now i mentioned this but prestiging is something you can do when you reach max level it allows you to re-level your character again for rewards and prestiging can be done in order to acquire a better build or simply for the rewards for doing so like i said there's both unique rewards you can get simply for prestiging specifically i'm referring to cosmetic rewards but if you also go over here you could talk to chromie to prestige by the way right here in any capital city same thing for stormwind and what you do is you can go to prestigious rewards and you could see heirlooms that you can buy you can also end up upgrading these heirlooms and they will give you even more experience but that's something that you can get to make it easier while you level to begin with now these heirlooms can also be acquired with marks of ascension which are actually an easier form of getting them if you think about it in some ways because you just have to farm the marks and the marks come easy as you prestige and do daily quests and other simple things throughout the game now we've also got the concept of skill cards and lucky cards let me show you guys how this works now what you're going to want to do is at any level starting i believe at least at level 10 you can go to birth or you can go to silas dark moon same thing for the alliance and you can get hands of fate so you spend your marks of ascension which are acquired by prestiging or doing daily quests or anything like that or even regular quests in the open world on three marks of fate so let's do that now when you make that purchase you also get five lucky sealed cards and five regular sealed cards now the hands of fate can actually be used to give you three brand new choices for your build you can choose one let's say i wanted the holy nova okay what do i replace well i have to replace divine storm riptide or holy wrath oh no that seems like a bad deal i'm going to click the x right here and pass on that but there's another option as well you can see i have multiple lucky and sealed cards here and let me quickly tell you what the difference is sealed cards are guarantees lucky cards just increase your chance to get the ability so if i use a sealed card you'll see sadly i got skill card conjure food now i already own this one and uh, if I do a lucky card, let's see, what do I get? Lucky card rupture. I own that one as well. What I can do, though, is when I make a new character or prestige my current character, I can go over here to the skill cards tab 
click on that, and you can see I have two pages. I have right here the active skill cards, which you start off on, and then I have right here active lucky cards, which you can click right here to get to. Now, as you can see, with this run, I had two lucky cards I wanted, but I did not get. But I got four that I wanted and I did get, and of course I got all of my skill cards during the run, because you always do. Essentially what this means is that if I did want conjure food, and I were to put it right here, then I would be guaranteed to roll conjure food at the level that you typically acquire conjure food at. Same for anything else and same concept with the lucky cards. As soon as you get to the level where that ability would be offered to you, your chances of acquiring that ability increase. Now you can still get unlucky as I did, but you can also get lucky as I did as well. Skill cards are essential for you to get the best build you could possibly get on the draft version of the game as that is the most popular one. As you can see, this is really two o'clock at night for me right now and this is just the people in Orgrimmar and we're on the Burning Crusade expansion so most people don't even hang out here. So think about that. And now the last thing I want to show you guys are challenge modes. This is kind of a under the radar thing. Like they're a big deal, but they're also something a lot of people skip, but you can do them for a variety of different reasons. So you can go to Stony Tark. You can also find him in Northshire in the Valley of Trials and you talk to him. He's going to offer you a variety of different trials like uh, narcolepsy, which says you are an Iron Man, but you are real to do it yourself kind of person. So leaving a rested area causes you to become fatigued. If the bar runs out, you fall asleep forever, right? So, hey, but if if you complete it and you make it to the max level with this challenge, you'll get these rewards right here. Like a title, uh, aspect of the nap, teaches you how to channel the ability to sleep on your character, right? You get a prestigious cache, and those caches have incredible rewards like Mystic Extracts, good gear, a chance of one or more global tier tokens, that's literally tier set stuff, and one of the new legendary enchants. So this is an option if you want to take up a challenge, and if you want the rewards, I do recommend it. But if you're brand new, I recommend you play the game normal first. If you're not and you want something different, this is a really cool thing to do for fun. Now there's actually one more thing I want to talk to you guys about, because there's a lot, it turns out, and I hope I have an example on this guy. Let's see if I do. If I type in mastery, I do. Good. So, there is something in Ascension called masteries. Masteries are groupings of different abilities that, uh, for example, I have Judgment Mastery that has Judgment of Wisdom, Judgment of Justice, and Judgment of Light tagged to it. The way this works is that when you choose a mastery, it will give you one of the abilities from all of the different ones selected there to choose from. In my case, I had Judgment Mastery at level 1, so the only abilities offered to me were Judgment of Wisdom and Judgment of Light. I chose Judgment of Light. But what the mastery allows me to do is it allows me to get Judgment of Justice or Judgment of Wisdom in a future draft, not only at an increased rate, but also for free. Judgment is a rare ability, and you can only have so many of all of these types of rarities. But if I take this, every rare judgment I get after the first one will cost me nothing for the rarity cost, and therefore they are free. Maybe for judgment, you might not see as much value in that, although I did take judgment of justice and I'm not paying for it, and I do like that. But for some other masteries out there, like stance masteries, aspect masteries, uh, you might find something worth using multiples of, and now you don't have to pay for it. So there's going to be some strategy we talk about with this as well. Very, very useful. Now you can only have so many of every legendary, epic, rare, and uncommon quality ability, and right here it tells you exactly how many of each. Now every ability is assigned a certain amount of gems, and you can see right here, this is one epic for entangling roots, but I bet you if I went over to maybe, let's see, death coil, yeah, it costs two. So make sure to keep this in mind as you're picking abilities, as you're making this happen, because you do have some limitations and you need to think before you just draft every single thing of a certain rarity that piques your fancy. So guys, that is everything that's really unique about Ascension in a serious way. We'll go over some minor ones at the end, uh, right after we're done with the step-by-step. -step. But real quick, I want to argue what the point of playing the random draft server is over playing free pick. Not necessarily to convince you because it has more players anyway, but only because I think it's the right fair thing Thing to do, and I'll try to be genuinely fair. As I said, the free pick realm has some downsides, but the biggest upside of them all, you can do literally whatever you want within the constraints that I already showed you, and that's super fun for a lot of people. If you don't want RNG, if it bothers you to any varying degree, the free pick realm still has a community, and you can still play on it and have fun. 
However, the majority of people do play on the seasonal realms. Even though they could be a headache sometimes, you do have a big, big perk of it being random, which is that acquiring a seriously perfect build is damn near impossible the vast majority of the time. Even the best build guys out there are going to end up with something that they hate, right? And you might think that's a problem, but I would say for the sake of balance, it's actually quite nice. Because in a classless game, where you can literally have anything, I bet your mind right now is thinking about all the crazy broken synergies, and yes, the ones you're thinking of, they can probably be done. And so you really have to think about that. It's fun at first until you want to play seriously to any degree, and then it's not. So the random modes temper you a bit, so that even though you can still get everything you need to perform, I'm talking about you're playing a physical build and you want Death Wish, so you have your damage cooldown, right? Maybe you don't get lucky and you don't get Charge or Heroic Leap, but you get something else, like, I don't know, Disengage, or, you know, the Hook Throw that, you know, the Combat Rogues got from Retail, and it lets you jump from one place to another, or you get the uh, Demon Leap, for example, you'll get something different that's similar and it'll make you unique, but it might not be as good and that's the limitation. Maybe the guy you're fighting in PvP won't have all the answers, or if you're me, they always do. True. But regardless of what happens to you, that is the main argument. It's actually just a little bit extra progression, it's more to do. It's a little bit more of a leveled playing field, it's a little bit more fun to me because not everybody has the best stuff all the time, and so you're always trying to use your brain to draft a good thing because there is some skill in drafting a good build, obviously, but also you're just kind of hoping, you're, you're gambling a little bit, I won't lie, to hope that you get exactly what you want, and if you're not a gambler, you're trying to be smart so that you can actually get what you want by playing the game correctly, by acquiring the skill cards you need, and making good decisions in-game. So that's just a quick spiel, but let's jump into a step-by-step very quickly of how to play. All right, step one, create a character. So the game is factionless, by the way, so it doesn't actually matter what faction you pick unless you want to join a guild with a friend of yours and you need to pick the faction that that friend is on as a result because guilds seem to be the only thing that are faction-based in the game right now, but everything else is factionless. In other words, you could pug a raid, do Mythic Plus, do the random dungeon finder, you can do quests, everything. You can group with someone from the opposite faction, it doesn't matter. The only thing you can't do is join the guild of somebody from the opposite faction. So just pick the race you like the most or the one with the best racials for you and have some fun. All right, step two, this gets into the meat of really the actual game. Take a look at all of the abilities in the game at this point. If you've played WoW before, you're already way ahead, obviously. And most of you have played WoW, but I mean, if you've played at least, I would say at least all of the classes one time, then you're really golden, right? But if you haven't, or even if you have, just go through the abilities in the game. What I'm saying is what you want to do is you open up the ascension interface right you click character advancement down here and you just go to druid and you say okay wrath nature's grasp mass entanglement what do these things do solar beam read through them get an idea for what's going on at the very bare minimum pick a few classes that you actually like let's say you just hate priest and no matter what you're going to avoid priest stuff okay fair enough but let's say you're a warrior guy a pally guy an enhancement shaman guy a rogue guy take a look at all four of those and get an idea of what's going on That'll help you, you know, conceptualize the different possible combinations and it'll make it easier for you to draft stuff as you progress your character. I do not recommend going into this completely blind, I'll just say that. Now, step three, pick a legendary enchant to pursue right out of the gate. So, this might take you some time and how to do this would be that when you open the same UI that I just showed you guys on, you go down here to Mystic Enchant, I showed you guys this earlier. For you, you won't probably have a lot or anything, so you go to Unknown. And you just want to sort, you could even go further and say, quality legendary, right? You just want to take a look at the legendary enchants and just start reading through them. You could probably at first glance figure out that some of these aren't for you. Let's say you're not a healer. You could probably tell Tidecaller is a healer one, right? So you move on with your life and you just look for something that, you know, appeals to you. Maybe pick a few and really make a decision because what you're going to want to do next is going to rely entirely on the legendary enchant that appealed the most to you. So, okay, you've created your character. This just popped up on your screen. What you might want to do to start off, by the way, is just click the X up here and don't even worry about it. You're getting your UI ready. It's not going to be ugly like this one. Your name is Jiggy. You're a dwarf, right? Now, after you chose an enchant, you want you might be wondering how you acquire it. Um, you have two different ways. Number one, you could acquire it throughout the world. There are World Forge enchants that can only be found in certain areas. I'll put a link in the description below where you can look up where all of them are from a certain Discord. And
and there are also regular enchants, which you can find off monster drops, I mean, literally anything that you could get loot from, and those will actually have a higher chance of dropping for the certain abilities that your character is using. So, in other words, if you have Sinister Strike right now on your character, and you kill a wolf, they're going to drop an enchant, and that enchant will probably be something to do with Sinister Strike, because you already have the ability. If you're in a group, then you'll see enchants sometimes for other abilities that you might not have. So, it might take you a bit, but another way to think about it is you could also just go to the auction house, and they're not often that expensive. You might see some rare ones for 100 gold or something, but again, you can easily get them yourself, but a lot of them are anywhere between 10 and 55, 60 gold, and that's not that bad, especially for a legendary where you only need one and you're good to go because you keep it forever. Outside of that though, once everything is done, you need to draft. And that, my friends, was the UI that I just closed. So you bring it right back up and you are presented with three different choices. Now, I get Mana Forged Barrier, Blood Rage, and Seal of Wisdom. And you could go into this blind, but if you have a dealer's draft deck off the auction house for like two or three or 400 gold, probably something like that, uh, depends on the economy and supply and demand or if you get it off the end game shop i hate to say it but i'm not advertising i'm just being honest you could make it to where you can literally pick your first four abilities by continuously spamming this until you get what you want with every choice right if you don't and you're regular you start off with a redraft button right here you can just click this to completely redraft your entire build Otherwise, you are stuck with your choices. Let me put it like this. If I want to use the draft deck and I pick charge, I keep charge. But then I see these three, I hate them all. I click this button, it only redrafts this one. I kept my charge. But for the regular stuff, if I see I have charge and then I get earth shock and I really like this, but then I see, oh, this is garbage, right? Don't click this button because if you really like these two, you should just click something and then hope your next draft is fine. And let's say, oh, holy light, that's actually not that bad. And you look at this and you say, fine, I'll take this. And you move on. Because if you don't do that, and the spell draft redraft option is also in your inventory, by the way, so you can click it there too. But if you don't do that and you click this, right, it actually gets rid of all of your abilities and you redraft from scratch. So keep that in mind. Okay, so step five though, you've picked everything you want and now you can just start leveling your character by any means you see fit. And here are my recommendations. Number one, as soon as you reach level 10, if your goal is simply to level fast and without much effort or brain, just spam battlegrounds. It's quick XP whether you win or lose and just make sure to stay with your team and make sure you're close to the enemy when they die so that you get massive XP drops from their deaths. Keep in mind, if you solo kill somebody and nobody else is around, you get all of the XP. But if you're with a group, you split the XP among everybody nearby. So it's still good to always stay with your team, but if you can solo people, you will level faster. Number two, acquire an XP pot and join a group with someone who has an experience aura and spam dungeons with a group of five until you reach max level. This is the fastest way to level in the game, and if you ever see people advertising in chat for a 1 to 60 group or a 1 to 70 group, that's what they want to do. You need at least one experience potion, which can be found off the auction house, typically anywhere between 40 and 90 G, depending on the economy, supply and demand, but it's always safe to bring two, and then you can make that happen. Now, you don't have to form a formal group you could just spam random dungeon finder at level 15 so i do recommend that as well and lastly you can level by completing quests the traditional way mix it up a bit right with any route you see fit this isn't horrendously slow on ascension by the way it's actually still pretty freaking fast and you'll see yourself reaching max in only a day's play time and i really mean a day of a casual normal human i'm talking eight nine hours not 24 um, if you try at all. If you don't try and you play slow, you could really drag it out a lot, especially if you're doing a trial mode. But uh, yeah, this is the slowest way to level for sure right now, but it's still an option and it's not that bad. Okay, step six. As you level, think clearly about the abilities that you draft. You draft a new ability every two levels starting at level 10, and you can only have so many of every rarity type. You want to make sure that you choose wisely and that you don't simply pick an ability for the sake of picking it with every single draft. As I mentioned, you can return to Silas Darkmoon every 10 levels, you can acquire Hands of Fate from him at an amount that scales with your level, and you can either save these for when you reach max level and use them all at once, or you can use them while leveling to try and get better abilities at specific levels. An example might be that you have an ability that you really want, and it unlocks at level 60. So you save all of your Hands of Fate, and as soon as you get to 60, you use all of them to try to increase your chances of getting what you need. Another thing to keep in mind while leveling is that sometimes when you're doing your draft, you will get an option to redraft one of your current abilities for something of equal rarity. Um, this happens sporadically. Sometimes it happens a lot. Sometimes it doesn't. It's literally RNG. 
but always keep that in mind. Sometimes you'll have an extra option to really perfect your build. Step seven, you reached max level. So you can either continue re-rolling to get a perfect build. You can proceed your character as I described before, and you can try again if you don't like the abilities you got, or you can continue playing at max. Let me tell you what to do with every option. If you choose to proceed, you follow my original steps again. But first, remember that you need to use your skill cards and lucky skill cards so that you can guarantee certain abilities on your next run. So this is what it might look like back to that original character. I can go down here to the character advancement UI, go to skill cards right, and I got abolish curse. I can click it and use it. I want abolish disease on this guy. I want air ascendance and I want air totem mastery. Now, one thing I did forget to mention is that the regular skill cards come exactly from what I told you, but the golden ones only come by spending 50 gold at the same vendors. That's a gold sink and that's just a way to get a little bit of extra oomph, but the regular ones come from just playing the game as I described before. But this would be my build. So now at level 24, 32, 40, and again 32, and if they have the same level, you'll get it on the next draft. I will get all of these offered to me and I will be able to hone in my build. Similarly, if I go to lucky card, maybe I want ambush. Starting at level 18, I have an increased chance of getting ambush. The way it works is that commons like this white one right here, if you lucky card it, you're gonna get it. Uncommons, basically same. Rare, almost true. Epics, nah, you might not get lucky, but you did increase your chance. Legendary, it's probably not gonna happen if you're even lucky enough to get a legendary card. They're super rare. I only have one right now and I've played the game forever. But yeah, I mean, you might have a chance of getting it, but the epics and the legendaries are still super rare even when you do lucky card. It's still super good to try though. It's better than not. Now, if you kept re-rolling your character and you did perfect your build or you just chose to play, this is what you do next, which is step eight. Once you get the build you're happy with, you start playing. Congrats, right? Here's exactly what you do. Spam battlegrounds to acquire PVP gear with some time um, talking to the devs and making things happen, complaining. I bitched so much for so many years about how I thought the PVP gear prices were absurd. Finally, we got PVP gear brought down to an acceptable price so that you can literally get it within like five BGs. And now nobody can complain, including me, which is really good. Now, let's be real. You will actually get farmed and have zero fun for the first five or six BGs you do, as you do in any version of WoW, to be fair, when you don't have gear. But the perk is that at least after that, you're going to be on a level playing field. You'll have all the gear you need from PvP. And if you win those BGs, by the way, it might take less. Make sure to do your battleground daily at the call board. There's a variety of dailies on the call boards. We'll talk about that more later on as well. It gives you 10,000 honor. Very, very good. Arena is another thing you could do, by the way. Same concept. You could spam arenas as well. It doesn't matter if you lose. You could do your dailies, get your gear super fast, and you can compete competitively if you want to as well. The only thing you'll be lacking are the different enchants you need, which you'll have to get the gold for somehow, like regular WoW, or from a PvP vendor if you could farm it somehow, stuff like that. Now, the second thing you could do is you can spam dungeons, whether that's regular, heroic, mythics, or M+, and you can continue your progression that way. I've simplified this concept, obviously, but it's really the best thing in Ascension, in my opinion, at max level. The dungeon grinding experience, the M+, specifically, is very enjoyable to me with the right build, and if you enjoy playing it, you'll enjoy spamming dungeons with your friends or with randoms. It's just actually interesting to gear your guy up and do that progression. Number three, you could do raids in the same way that you would with any other version of WoW, except this time you have additional difficulties to explore and also pugging raids on Ascension is very much the norm and I do appreciate that. Now the different difficulties are going to be Mythic and Ascended difficulties on top of regular and heroic. Mythic is still very much puggable. Ascended has new mechanics that are often not puggable and uh, I will say it is possible. I've pugged and Ascended before, but it's not common at all. Typically, Ascendeds do require a guild of people who are genuinely working together to complete it. I've heard from guilds who put in ungodly amounts of hours on certain bosses to be the first one to beat it. So if that's enjoyable to you and you're hyper competitive, this is actually going to be super fun to you. Number four, depending on the expansion, you can of course always farm different reputations to get certain enchants or pieces of gear that you want, especially earlier on in the expansion. And TBC just started for Thrall, so that's something you can easily do and have a lot of fun with. Scryers and Aldor and stuff like that. And number five, as I alluded to before, you can complete call board daily quests and profession daily quests. So this is your call board daily. There's one in Stormwind as well. It has your, you know, tutorial quests, but then it has PVP, professional
progression quests, high risk quests, miscellaneous stuff when there ever is one, and stuff like that. When the server has a lot of people, you can also change your instance over here so that you can go to a less populated uh, realm, basically. And also, there's another profession guy over here. I think he would be in the same place for the alliance at the auction house. It's this guy, uh, Kurg Pebble Cutter. I just did a daily for him, and he has a bunch of the uh, TBC ones right now, which are very, very good. And they also give you things like callboard caches. This is why you would do this. You could literally gear your character out on callboard caches, which will give you max level gear. Um, and it's really, really easy to like get one hardened adamantite tube. In fact, I bet if I looked it up on the auction house, because this is often a way that people try to make money, I'll find it for a decent price. Adamantite tube. Holy shit, I take that back. Well, hey, at least you can make a lot of money on that one. But honestly, like earlier, one of them was nether weave bandages. And so I bet, yeah, like 16 is exactly what it was. 16 gold, your daily is done for free gear. Some are obviously more expensive than others based on how difficult it is to do the quest. There you go. Now that's basically everything guys and that was a lot for me. Every time I do these guides I really realize like how much there is to say. But let me just finish by going over just a few more things that you can think about today. Here are some other things that Ascension has that you can partake in. Number one, transmog. You can see my dude all kitted out with my uh, spectacles that cost me multiple thousands of gold to get. The transmog scene, even though it's not as robust as retail, because how could it be, right? Is still the most robust and the most coveted and well done of any on any private server right now and I do enjoy it and people do transmog contests sometimes like myself. We have high risk PvP. I've briefly mentioned it before. It's less of a big deal nowadays than it used to be but that's an option too. You have mountain pet collecting new profession items often from the high risk environment that you can acquire to either make money on or use on your character. You have the wood cutting skill which will soon have a carpentry skill attached to it to make things like relics, bows and arrows, stuff like that and you can of course collect various enchants throughout the world that can only be found in the world, which I mentioned before, the World Forge Enchants and the Discord is once again in the description below. But essentially, the name of the game is Hone Your Build and Go Again, or if you're more casual, you can just treat it as an experience to do something different and to enjoy the game in a different way, which is how I recommend that you play. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this guide, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. It took a while to make, sadly, but uh, I'll see all of you on the next one. Major thanks to all the members on my channel. Love and appreciate you guys. Like I said, see you in the next one. McDoubles out.